Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. There's something about the Word of God. It's light. It's honey. It's a sledgehammer. It will break rocks to pieces. It's a wind, it's a spirit, it's sweet, it's bitter, it's corrective, it's encouraging, it imparts faith, it sanctifies, it cleanses, it's just everything. So, no matter whatever it is, the challenge you're facing, the Word of God has a face that will address that issue and bring, let me use the word, a smile to your face. I'm now using contemporary words this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So I want to encourage you um, briefly. The Bible says that Abraham faced a hopeless situation, but against all hope in hope he believed. Now go back a little bit to Nigeria. Don't lose hope in Nigeria. Don't. This nation is going to rise. My goodness. That green passport is going to be the love and the gold of nations. Nations will queue to come to Nigeria to come and see the glory of God. Don't lose hope in Nigeria. Nigeria will be great again. Amen? And also in your situation and your life, don't lose hope no matter what you're facing. I know there are reports that logically are right and those reports breathe hopelessness, but I want to assure you the God that makes the impossible possible and will bring water from a rock and can raise children from stones says to tell you that in your case, you know, just a minute, I want to just bring your mind to a little bit about this God will serve this Jesus. In Psalm 8, an angel asked the Lord, what is man? that you are so mindful of him or the son of man that you visit him. Now before that verse, he spoke about the universe and explained that there is so much in the universe to take your attention, oh God, that why do you still focus on man? And one of it is that do you know that in the galaxy there are over a trillion stars. The smallest star, the tiniest, they are of various sizes and various shapes. The smallest star is over 3,000 times the size of the earth. Do you know that there are over a trillion of them there? Who put them there? God. I've asked myself, the earth is round. It's spinning. What is holding it? Nothing. It's just an suspension spinning and going around the sun in 365 one quarter days spinning around in a day like that and bible says it's upheld by the word of his power and i ask myself what is now the electricity here to your house is sustained by a turbine that is powered either by gas or diesel or nuclear power something is supplying energy i ask myself what is supplying energy to the sun that is burning at over 2,000 degrees Celsius for over 6,000 years has not gone off? Now, every machine you put on your television, your carpet hoover, you plug it to a power source and it works. When you switch off the power source, it goes off. It's a machine, your water pump, if the light goes off, it does not work. Your heart is a machine. Now, it's been working for 50, for 60 years. What is keeping it going? This is the God that you and I serve. That is your God and my God, your Father and my Father. And he says in all these things, you are more important than the entire galaxies, than all the stars, than the Mars, the Pluto, the everything you can put together. He said you are more important than all of them. So I want to encourage you this morning God is interested in you, is interested in your case, is interested in your health, is interested in your finances, is interested in your home, is interested in your children, your husband, your wife, your family, and everything about you. 
and he will intervene. Your case is not hopeless, though it may look hopeless to man. But I bring you a message of hope. Against all hope in hope today, you shall have help from above in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, I didn't plan for that, but I guess God is still trying to encourage his children, the Christians in the north who have been persecuted, and those who are in the south facing all manner of crisis. No one is immune from it, but he says to assure you he's still on the throne. Nobody can remove him. Nobody has, the one that even tried it, he didn't even fight it. It was the angel Gabriel that cast Satan out of it. It was Michael that cast Satan out of heaven. He has not moved from that throne. He's well seated. They don't vote him out. They don't vote him in. He's there forever and ever. He has no tenure. It doesn't expire. Amen. For men, they will expire. For men, they will die. For them, men, they'll be voted out. He said, but he is the king of kings and lord of lords. And from today, your case will have speed and urgent address from the Most High God in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I said earlier, God is bringing a total package to mankind. God is solving all issues. One of the things that was spoken in Acts chapter 4, uh, Acts chapter 2, when the angel was going, when Jesus was going and lifting up, and they said, Lord, will you again at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And the angel said, no. And the Lord said, no. He said, it's not for you to know the times the Father has set in his power. But you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. He said, the angel said, this Jesus whom you see going shall return likewise. They're not going to give birth to him a second time. That he'll be one weakling and they'll be chasing all his followers. No, no, no. He's coming in glory and power. He will deserve all the kings of the earth who are troubling the church. He will fight them with the sword of his mouth. He will defeat Satan and plunge him into the bottomless pit. He's coming with power. And he said, when he is returning, he said, whom heaven must hold back until the restitution of all things. He's coming for a triumphant church. He's not coming for a church that is holy and poor. Neither is he coming for a church that is rich and filthy. He's coming for a church that is holy, a church that has all his needs addressed and met. He's coming for a church that is healthy. He's coming for a church that is sanctified. He's coming for a church without spot and without wrinkle. And who is that church? You and I. Jesus is coming. The signs are there when the last days, but he cannot come until you are whole. He cannot come until I am whole. So God is making the church whole. Is addressing issues. I call it the total package when all matters will be addressed in our lives. And so we're addressing and coming to a time, like I said in the children of Israel, he said none of them was feeble. Psalm 104 or Psalm 105. He said none of them was feeble, none was sick. All were strong. So he's coming for a church that is strong. And so it's a total package. It's coming for a church that is whole. In 1 Thessalonians, and I read the main text again, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and I read verse 23, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, totally. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless Unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when you are saved, you are born again, when you have received Jesus Christ as the only begotten Son of the Most High God. Now, let me say this. There are so many people who think they will make heaven. Because, you know, before I got saved, I felt I was very nice. I didn't do any ill to any person. I didn't steal anything from anybody. I even used to tell a few of my friends, I said, look, don't hurt these ladies. Treat them nicely. I, I believe I was nice. I just believe I was nice. But I was heading to hell. And you know, there, there was this um, man who was very nice. Very, very nice. Very wonderful. 
and I used to look to him as a very nice person. And I believe once you're nice, you treat, you give to the poor, you help people. When you die, you make heaven. Jesus Christ. And the day he was going to die, an invisible force held his neck, raised him and slammed him on the ground, and he died. And the man looked at me, an angel looked at me, said, you'll go likewise if you don't surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Ah, I woke up, it was a dream. The man died the same way I saw in the dream. And I had to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And people think because they're nice, your spirit of every man is filled with sin, dirt, and only. Now, in the natural world, when you have dirt, you use soap and detergent to clean it. In the spiritual world, when you have dirt, you use blood to clean it. And that's why people of other religion, when they say threat to their life, they do what they call sacrifice. They kill rams and kill goats just uh, to make appeasement for themselves. Only the blood of Jesus can wash the spirit of a human being clean and make him acceptable to God. God, the, the, the U.S. Embassy will not admit you into their country as a foreigner because you're nice. They will only admit you because you have a visa. If you don't have a visa, even if you're nice, they will not admit you. God will only admit you into heaven if you are born again, if you have accepted Jesus as your only begotten, uh, as the only begotten son of the most high God. So your spirit has to be sanctified for saved by accepting Jesus. Then your soul and then your physical body. Now the people who live in good health, their physical body is good, is great, but they have emotional damage. They are not whole. Some have been raped before. And I've always said it. If you have been raped before, please, it's time to let go of this hurt. Some of you have carried it for years. And God says, move forward. And I've told you the options to move forward. One of them, if you have evidence, take it to the police. Make a report and let them prosecute whoever did such an evil crime. If you don't have, if you want just comfort, People to sympathize with you, take it to the social media, and people will write so much and encourage you, then you'll be encouraged, sympathized with, and comforted. If you want it to be addressed, solved with a healing, because there is a damage to the soul of that person, then you go to God. You have to go to God who can heal your emotions. Now, when Joseph was sold off into slavery by his brothers. Now, even his brothers coming to beg him could not heal him anymore. No, he was emotionally damaged. And that's why when he spoke to the baker and the butler in the prison, he recounted what his brothers did. He said, I had done nothing wrong. He said, I was sold into slavery. You could see a man hurt. But when God healed him, God didn't remove that memory when a Nelson Mandela, which I believe was jailed wrongly, I was put 27 years of his prime of his life, was incarcerated and was jailed for what I believe was a struggle that was genuine. That's what I believe. When he came out, God didn't wipe out that memory of the jail. God just gave him a name that everywhere he goes, that name is respected. God gave him a position. God gave him a honor. It's called the Manasseh blessing. When he came to Joseph, God said, gave him a Manasseh blessing. And he said, God has made me to forget all the hurts and all the wrongs in my father's house. So if you want to be healed, the court cannot heal you. Even if the person who raped goes to prison, you still cannot be healed. You have, you will need a Manasseh blessing from God. Which God, when he gives to you, it will make you forget. That was what he gave to Nelson Mandela. All the 27 years were just put by the side. And even those who had 27 years not in prison, most of them could not achieve what he had achieved at the end of his life with that name. And so, move forward. But God says, 
and bringing a sanctification, a wholeness to your spirit, your soul, and your mortal body. I'm going to make it whole. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adeshoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. Now in the book of Joshua chapter 5 from verse 1 to 9 but before I go there to be whole to be whole means God wants to make you entire. He wants to put you in an unbroken and undamaged state. Like the person who has been raped is damaged. So he wants to heal that damage and put you in an undamaged state. He wants to put you in one piece. He wants to make you complete. He wants to make you total. Now he wants to make you coherent. He wants to make you entire. Now, another translation of all says, he wants to feel parts in your body that will cause your body mechanism to work together as one unit, glorifying God. I'll use that point to pray. Let me repeat. The word to behold means he wants to fit parts, adjust parts, create parts, correct parts, parts and fit them in your body, make them work together as one single unit such that God will be glorified in your body and bring profit into your life. And anyone watching this program right now, I'll share a testament. Remember, we don't even know when it happened. Her tube was removed abroad. She had a tube that was, a, I think it was an ectopic pregnancy. So the tube was removed. And then she's just faithful in the church. Serves with her whole heart. I don't know whether it's the service got rewarded or her faithfulness. The next time they went to do a scan, they found two tubes, all perfect. God created another tube there. She didn't do a surgery for a, an implant of another tube. No, it wasn't done. She did a surgery to remove a tube, which is glaring, which the evidence is there. A tube was removed, and they told her, you can still have children with one tube. But when she came to Nigeria and was serving God so faithfully, these are people that sold out to God. There's a lady, I don't know, sold out to God. And I don't know what warranted her to do a scan at that time. They found two new tubes. What happened? God was making her body whole, was fitting. He had fitted a part so that they can walk homogeneously in one unit, in one form to walk well. And so if anyone is over there, you're hearing me or you're watching this program and there's any part of your body is not aligning, is not well fitted, is disjointed, or it's missing. I release grace. I call him Elohim grace, creator God. That the power of Elohim through this grace will create that new part in your body, will adjust that new part in your body, will put that new part in your body, will correct that non-functioning part in your body and cause it to work in one functioning unit peacefully in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And your body will glorify God and will work to the glory of God peacefully, prosperously, and profitably in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, God is giving a total package because Jesus is coming. And he's coming for a church that the spirit is perfect, the soul is undamaged, the body is perfect. 
I didn't say it's going to be tall or short. No, that's what I mean by perfect. But in that body, there'll be no form of offense. There'll be no sickness and there'll be nothing lacking in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Now in Joshua chapter 5, Joshua chapter 5, now I read from verse 1 to 9. Joshua chapter 5 from verse 1 to 9. Um, sorry, just a minute. Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5, I read from verse 1 to 9. It came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of the Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanite, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel, until were passed over, that their hearts melted, neither was there spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. At the time, the Lord said to Joshua, Make these sharp knives, circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Joshua made him sharp knives, circumcised the children of Israel at the heel of the foreskins. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise all the people that came out of Egypt. There were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness, by the way, after they came out of Egypt. Now all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord unto whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord swore to their fathers that he would give us a land that floweth with milk and honey. And the children whom he raised up in their stead, them Joshua circumcised for they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. And it came to pass by verse 8, when they had done circumcision, all the people that they abode in their places in the camp till they were whole. The Lord said to Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you, whereof the name of the place is called Gilgal, until this day, where the reproach is rolled away. So the people could not advance into the promised land until they were all whole. God said, You can't take sick people with you. You can't move forward with sick people, Joshua. You have to make sure they are whole. And so Jesus cannot take sick people with him. No, he cannot do that. And he cannot move them to the next phase and prepare them for his coming. So what is he doing? He's keeping them in camps and making the church whole. Spirit, soul, physical, body, all around that. No aspect is left out. Amen. So, we call it the total package. Now the question remains, what do I need to do to experience this total package? You know, if you were to address every challenge in your life individually, there's a possibility you might never have enough time to address everything till the day you die. Because there are issues that are there that many of which you are not even aware of. Though I've heard of people go to conduct deliverance over something that was done by their great-grandfather, so they had to go to the grave and do some deliverance. I'm not for that, no. However, there are issues in people's lives that they're not aware of that needs to be dealt with. And that's why sometimes somebody has a challenge in life and they say, oh, maybe when he was uh, 18 years old, he did this and he's trying to remember at age 50 what he did at age, oh, I remember, oh, that is what is causing this thing. So there are so many issues that if one starts addressing them one after the other, one may never finish addressing them till he has outlived his time on earth. So God has something. He said, I will give you one thing you can do that will address the entire package of your life. In Matthew 6, he says, I give you a more excellent way. Seek ye first. It is says, seek only the kingdom of God and all things will be added. You know, for example, in 1 John chapter 1, 
He says, whosoever commits sin. He says, come to God and ask for forgiveness. And whoever confesses his sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us. That's First John chapter 1. To forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I guess I need to go there. First John. First John, not John chapter 1. First John chapter 1. And I read 6, I read from verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him, that's God, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us, not from something unseen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. However, if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, if we say we have no sin, we lie, meaning we all have sins. If we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all sins. Psalm 19 says, Oh God, keep us from secret sins. Cleanse us from secret faults and keep us from presumptuous sins and cleanse us from secret sins. That means there are presumptuous sins, sins we are not even aware of. How do we confess what we are not aware of? But verse 6 and verse 7 gives us a better option. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another. It says automatically, this say we must confess our sins. So the blood of Jesus Christ's son will cleanse us, not from the sin we are saying, all sin, both known and unknown. So God has levels of glory in his word. You can come and be confessing all sins, then you'll be forgiving you as you are confessing. But you can walk in his light by faith and have fellowship, walk in love, then you don't need to confess anything. Whether you know it or not, the blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all sins. In John 16, he says, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. So you can write 200 things and start asking him. But in Matthew 6, he says, if you seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, you don't need to ask. Everything that the Father thinks you need will be addressed and given. So it's a higher level of glory. And God is calling the church to a higher level of glory. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again, same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.